leading up into this testing? Yeah, probably a lighter week than last week in terms of our training um, load, just some banged up bodies from last week, but also probably feel like we'll get more value out of uh, just dissecting our game, um, everyone being really clear on their roles, um, and then just shorten up our training, so hopefully into the game really fresh and keen to go. You guys obviously aren't together as a squad for a hell of a long time. Do you, how long does it take to really find that cohesion and that click and those combinations? Do you feel that a little more going into the second week? Yeah, yeah. Look, um, when you pull any team together, there's going to be uh, a little bit of time needed to embed uh, different systems and for people to adjust coming from different teams um, as a group. The coming together and you know getting co some cohesion is really easy um, in this environment. So keep our our menu pretty narrow so there's not even to think about too much, just go out and execute those small parts of our game really well and then let their DNA flow. Could you talk a little bit about Ash Dixon, just sort of the mana that he has in the squad and, you know, obviously as the captain they'll be um, psyching the boys up. Like, what, what's he like sort of in and around training leading into a game? What kind of leader is he? He's an integral part of um, this team, you know, not just because he's a captain but just a, a driver of standards, um, you know, he really leads the charge in terms of um, role modelling, the sorts of behaviours that we want to see um, in, in Māori All Blacks. Um, yeah, he brings a lot of the edge and just keeps everybody accountable, so he makes the coaches' jobs pretty easy. We just put the, the foundations in place and him and the rest of the leaders really drive everything. And Ollie Norris, is the name's on the bench, will be looking to get his debut a week after his brother. How's he been? Is he um, a little angsty that his brother got in there ahead of him? Yeah, there's probably been a few words said behind closed doors that he got named initially and um, and then um, his brother got to, got to play before him last weekend. But uh, uh, Ollie's you know, a huge talent. He's only really transitioned into the front row in the last couple of years and made some great strides. Um, was able to witness firsthand uh, the, the impact that he can have, particularly off the bench uh, with the Chiefs this year and you know, he gets his opportunity to do the same here this week. What have the Norris brothers been like as a duo in the squad? Do they stick together or are they staying apart? Uh, oh, you can tell that they're brothers. You know, there's a bit of bit of internal banter going on, but um, no, they've assimilated themselves into the team like everybody else, and you know, making sure that they connect with people that they may not spend as much time with outside of this environment. So, um, yeah, they've been great, brought a lot of energy. And how have them and you know the other sort of newer boys? Um, found the, the more cultural aspect of being a part of a squad like this? Well, you probably have to ask them, but um, how they look like they're enjoying themselves. It's, you know, for everyone, anyone that comes in here, it's, um, you know, whether you've been totally immersed in your Māori culture or, you know, it's something that's a little bit new to you, um, when you come in here, you're made to feel comfortable really, really quickly and just be yourself and, um, you know, whatever end of the spectrum you're at, it's a bit of a starting point for some in your, um, in your cultural journey and um, you know, most of the guys love it and go away from this environment and um, you know, look to delve a little deeper and explore uh, more about themselves and you know, that's one of the great things about this team. And just lastly from me, a word on uh, Oteru Black and heading overseas next year. This is, there's a good chance this will be his last um, Parents in a Māori All Blacks jersey. Have you guys talked about that? Talked about his influence? Someone who's been a part of the squad for so long? Oh, not at the moment. We haven't. We've um, just focused on getting, you know, our preparation right. And no doubt, we're, we're all we're all aware that, you know, all Teddy and potentially one or two others might, um, you know, head offshore and um, could be the last time we see them in Māori All Black jersey. Um, so we want to put in a, a really good performance and that only comes through preparation. Those guys are humble, they don't want it to be about them, they just want it to be about um, the team. And the um, best way we can honour those guys is by, as I said, putting in a, a performance to be proud of. Talking about Otere, you've got Josh Iwani sort of waiting in the wings. He's, you've got this dual playmaker type scenario going on a bit like the All Blacks. Just talk us a little bit about that. What do you like about having two of those guys on the field at the same time? Well, we've got some talented rugby players out there, but we also need some people to sort of drive them around the park and make good decisions. So we've, you know, we've opted um, here to, to use a dual playmaker role um, this week with Ōtere and, and Josh. Um, both of them uh, have become accustomed to that at Super Rugby. I know that Ōtere at the Blues is you know, operated with um, you know, Zan Sullivan and a few others, Bodhi, last year uh, in a similar role, and Josh 
has fulfilled that role down at the Highlands really well. Um, equally, has has Caleb. So, well, look, we just yeah, you, you you need probably two teams in your team anyway. They either on the field at the same time or one sits on the bench. So we have elected to have them both on the field at the same time, and you know, it just gives us the luxury of um, carrying a, an outside back and a midfielder um, as opposed to a team that you know we don't need to, to cover on the bench. Um, how important is it to have a big crowd at Eden Park? It's a bit, I mean, at Mount Star, it's a bit odd, you know, rugby union's not really played there, but how important is it to get a big crowd there on Saturday? Uh, oh, look, I just think it would be fantastic for Māori rugby and Pacific Island rugby to, to get a, a great crowd along to, to Mount Smart. It's obviously the, you know, um, the home of rugby league in this country, um, but had the fortune of, um, you know, going there when the team was announced mm -hmm. and, you know, it looked like, looked like the ground was in fantastic order. Um, you know, it's a, it's a nice sort of intimate stadium where, you know, the, the spectators are pretty close to the ground. Um, and I think there'd be a good balance of, um, you know, those supporting uh, Samoa, Tonga um, and, and New Zealand teams. So if, uh, if the weather gods play their part and, you know, people get excited about coming along to see two great games and should make for a bumper crowd and that'd be awesome um, atmosphere. Has it been talked about much playing at Mount Smart and, and sort of how odd that is, a bit different? No, I haven't talked about it specifically, but I know that there's um, you know an air of excitement around it, and we'll get to sort of start building that feeling when we have our captains run there tomorrow. Um, so, uh, for most rugby players, a, a ground is a ground, and um, you know we're prepared to play anywhere if it's um, representing the, the Maori All Blacks. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be add a little something different and something to you know, um, to, to, to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's something a little different and Unique. certainly being there, yeah, there's uniqueness around it, which is sort of a welcome change when you, you know, often play at the same grounds against the same teams. Um, and there was a little bit of talk about maybe some pre-match ritual or haka with, with the All Blacks this weekend. I don't know if you can elaborate on anything like that. Has anything been talked about maybe? I think that's the general public maybe <laughs> beating something up like um, no, we'll, we'll do our haka and the, the All Blacks will do theirs and there won't be a, there won't be a, a double up, that's for sure. And just talk to us a little bit about you know coaching the Māori All Blacks. You know you, you have a few other jobs as well, but you always put your hand up for Māori All Blacks. You must really enjoy this environment as well. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, I've sort of I'm, I'm no longer at Bay of Plenty, so that's one less job, but. Um, uh, yeah, I've been really loved my time at the Chiefs, um, but I always look forward to my All Black campaign. I'm proud to be Māori. Um, this is a team that um, you know, I grew up uh, admiring. I uh, was never quite good enough to, to play in, so the fact that I get to um, add my footprint um, in a coaching capacity is, um, is equally rewarding for me. Um, and you know, it's it's a sort of a two or three week program, so it's it's. Um, while the overall impact on myself and the Māori community is huge, it doesn't take out a huge amount of time of, um, in, in the big scheme of things for me, so it's uh, it's a win-win. Yeah, hopefully it continues into the future. And just lastly, um, some of the boys described Saturday's game last week as a bit rusty. What changes do you want to see for this, this weekend? Yeah, well, look, we talked earlier on about, um, you know, needing building some cohesion and combinations, um, even though there's a lot of players that are familiar with each other, um, takes a little bit of time. So with an extra week of training, we, we feel like that cohesion will be there. Uh, we haven't changed a lot in terms of our game plan, um, simply because we didn't really get the opportunity to execute everything that we planned in week one, um, mainly due to the weather conditions. Um, that all looks like it's gonna be, you know, beautiful conditions on Saturday, so Hopefully with that little bit of extra time and, and, and clarity, um, we'll be able to go out and you know, play a brand of rugby that I think the general public want to see us play and certainly what we want to um, display. Just a, just a word on the crowd we were talking about um, before. Well, obviously there'll be a whole host of, of Tongans and Samoans and then Māori and other New Zealanders. How, what portion of that crowd are you expecting to be blue cheering on your, your opposition? Oh, I hope there's a huge Pacific Island um, population, you know, like it's, um, like it, it'll be, you know, it's sort of be quite nice if it's a 50-50 split, but at the end of the day, I just want people to walk through the gate and support it for, 
for um, to celebrate um, rugby being played in this country. You see still lots of challenges around COVID happening around the world and you know we continue to be blessed in this part of the world that we can run fixtures like this and when people get along to support it, it's, um, you know, it's something to be celebrated um, in New Zealand but also you know, showcasing us to the world.